house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. Abraham Lincoln, June 16, 1858. Chapter 1. A House Divided. The American Civil War. Thousands upon thousands of Americans turned against one another. Brothers killing brothers. The bloodiest war America would see. One engulfing the young nation in a maelstrom. Tearing her apart. The Americans are no strangers to war. independence from their colonial masters, they fought long and hard for their freedom. To hold true that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But in this pursuit, where the Americans have a divine destiny to establish on earth the moral dignity and salvation of man, war would be ever present. Fulfilling the manifest destiny calls for expansion. While pioneers cross the vast frontier, driving west in search of land and gold, the Native Americans find themselves pushed across the continent, killing and being killed confined in ever-narrowing territories. Novel technology and engineering feats hasten the expansion westward. connect the East Coast and Midwest, followed by railroads and telegraph wires only decades later, revolutionizing the flow of merchandise, news, and people. But not all became Americans voluntarily. men owned by other men labor in shackles to feed an insatiable need for cotton and textile mills bringing marvelous riches to some and comfortless lives to others these tired poor huddled masses yearn to breathe free too but instead are subject to crack of the whip equality and happiness even life are not reserved for all. Coming to mid-19th century, 
the ever-expanding nation is on a brink of rupture. Only a political compromise of 1850 diffuses the tensions between northern free states and southern slave states, but this merely delays the march on the road to the inevitable. I do not expect the house to fall. But I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing. Or all the other. the foundation of the wavering house would turn out to be beyond repair. Soon, blue flags bearing single stars would mark this union, commencing a war that would leave its mark in the Americans for centuries to come. Hello, hello, and welcome once again, J76NY here, and welcome to the very first episode of a brand new series on Grand Tactician The Civil War. Uh, this isn't the first time I've played the game, I've got uh, two uh, Confederate campaigns, one of which was the later date, uh, that was the last one I did. Uh, I've got a Union campaign, plus I played through the uh, historical battles. Uh, I was going to hold off on starting anything on the channel with this game until the uh, new Whiskey and Lemons DLC came out. But I kind of got a hanker in to play it, so here we are. This is going to be the Union 1861 start. I uh, decided to really challenge myself with this uh, campaign and bump up the difficulty to the max level. So uh, I might lose, might get my ass kicked in the process, I might win, who knows. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. If you uh, wouldn't kindly mind subscribing and following along with the campaign, if you like, you can join us right from the word go. Uh, if you're one of the returning viewers, welcome back. Thank you guys very much for your support. Uh, if you want to help out this series and my channel, get a little bit of traction with the YouTube algorithm, uh, hit that like button, leave some comments down below. And uh, it'll get the episode a little more uh, exposure on YouTube. And bring in more people. More people means more comments, means more fun. Anyway, with this start in the 1861 uh, campaign, there isn't a whole lot to do. War has not yet been declared. Um, we are kind of biding our time until the uh, attack on Fort Sumter. The only thing we can really do, um, we've got garrisons, we can't raise troops or ships or anything like that, but we can uh, select our initial policies. I can pick up to three. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, military. I want to get the core system first. And foremost, plus give myself a means to recruit more people. So, um, we're going to go with the Military Act right off the bat. Um, this is available after Lincoln's inauguration. Uh, try and find the one that bumps up the. Um, to be able to make core. Da, 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 da. Uh, independent units will be formed from regular six. Might be down along the ways here.
Let's see. Northern route, huh? This is thing new. Didn't see that in my last one here. But anyway, I'm gonna go down the military route first. Um, probably go industrialization, help with the weapons production. Uh, let's take a look at our uh, finances here. Can't do anything with projects just yet, but we can start. Funding. I'm going to go bump up my industry to the lowest level of high and max out my military. So there's that. Uh, diplomacy, give it a little bit. Um, not really too concerned with any type of European intervention, so we're going to go with that. I'm going to push the play button, get the first newspaper article, and then we're going to Continue on. America divided. President Buchanan unable to solve the crisis. Jefferson Davis to lead the Confederacy. So we are now waiting until President Lincoln uh, comes to power. So once we get to that point, I will be back with you. We do have our first uh, military policy here. So we can move on to see Militia Act 1. Uh, regulars, that's 24 days here, 12 days there. I'm going to go with Militia Act just because it's quicker. All right, so we can pick our first project here. We've got uh, Springfield rifles available to us in the military side of things and nothing in the uh, civilian. So we're going to uh, pick the Springfield uh, project here. Off the auto man. That. And continue on. It's now April 6, 1861. The supply situation at Fort Sumter is critical. Lincoln planning a relief expedition. Fort Sumter is now under siege. Lincoln can never be recalled. We and our posterity shall see our lovely South desolated by the demon of war. Alexander Stevens, Vice President of the Confederate States of America. Chapter 2. The Demon of War. The election of Abraham Lincoln, an anti-slavery Republican, as the 16th President of the United States was the last straw, triggering secession. One by one, Southern slave states declared secession from the Union and formed the Confederate States of America, led by President Jefferson Davis. This secession ignited the inevitable escalation, with fruitless efforts to still find a political compromise falling on deaf ears. Advocates of armed insurrection and fire eaters roam the states with steel in their eyes, and the public is aroused to volunteer to fill the ranks to quell the rebellion and to preserve the Union or to secure independence from it. Following open hostilities, President Lincoln's militia call for 75,000 volunteers for three months' service, sparks incredulous protest and loud outcry among the southern states. And these sparks set on fire the irreversible, 
more states secede. Now it's war. Seventy-five thousand, a hundred thousand, and even more. Soon, the largest armies seen on American soil muster, drill, and prepare for war. A war that is to be neat, short, and limited. The whole matter would be settled by Christmas. But a dark shadow would loom over the growing and inexperienced armies. Without a swift and decisive blow from the very offset of the war, there's every chance of a long, confused, and disorganizing civil war, and even foreign powers may feel a desire to take a hand therein. The time is ticking for the newborn Confederacy. The Union must act. The demon of war has awakened. All right, so we are now officially at war with the South, the rebels. So we have, looking at our own army, our own forces here, uh, we have the Department of the West under Brigadier General William S. Harney. Department of Ohio under George B. McClellan. Department of Pennsylvania under Major General Robert Patterson. And the Ormory Army of Northwest Virginia under Irvin McDowell. Uh, none of these forces really have a whole lot going for them right at the moment, but um, we are going to beef them up. Uh, we're going to start first by building up these armies that are on the front. Uh, they do have uh, the Army of the Shenandoah, the Army of the Potomac, 4,300 strong, and 2,200 Here's this mystery Army of the Northwest here. So we need to start recruiting. And the first thing I want to do is go into this army here. Uh, what are we looking at? I do want to make an entire uh, separate artillery division. Uh, per army once the core system comes into play um, we can go a bit further with that and uh, maybe make an artillery division so Irvin McDowell right now has 8857 men uh, we are going to add a new unit here We've got 83,000 volunteers Uh, out of the District of Columbia, we're going to form up uh, just for the sake of getting a uh, division of artillery here. Uh, Captain S Truman Seymour. Artillery officer per. <coughs> but we are going to move batteries over there if it'll let me. It'll let me here. I yeah, just mess that up here. Add you. Right. We do have one little cavalry unit here. Or Ennis Palmer. 1200. 100. Colonel Sherman. What did I do? I wanted to add a artillery division. All of our artillery under that. The 
think Joseph Hooker's an artillery guy. Colonel Joseph Hooker is going to be in charge of the uh, artillery division of McDowell's Army of Northwest Virginia. I'm going to give... Sherman up here I'm gonna replace him as the brigade commander with go with uh John J Abercrombie and Tyler I want to replace you General Sherman Hey, Bernie's not bad. Hey. Want cavalry division. And we can transfer you over here. Uh, let's see. We'll go with uh, three, three brigades of uh, infantry for now. For good old Burnside. Right. Uh, let's pull you from Vermont. For upgrades, we got eighteen thousands. Let's go through and upgrade everybody. They got Springfield, Springfield. Like everybody has Springfield so far. Uh, and then we can pull you from. Pennsylvania. be a larger brigade not gonna mess with their jackets or anything I guess we guess we could do this it's fine you. We need some more cavalry. Uh, pull you from Connecticut. And we'll go 500 for now. have for uh, cavalry weapons, no, mixed cavalry weapons, right, and add one more, etiquette two, there we go, we do have an extra uh, battalion here, He's artillery, Daniel Tyler. Let's see if we can find someone that's uh, cavalry related here. I 
He's a political appointee. We'll have to go down the ranks to find a cavalry officer here. We'll have to go way down the ranks to find a cavalry officer. Einzelman, he's a major. Let's go through everybody. Normally, I'm not. I don't show all the uh, or a lot of the meat and potatoes of this. Um, but for the first episode, I'm gonna let you guys see my the inner workings here of uh, building my army. It's infantry. Not a lot of cavalry officers here. Here's Captain Grant. We want to get him into a position of uh, leadership here pretty quick. About to give up here. Hey, there we go. Samuel Sturgis. First cavalry guy we've seen. We'll go with Samuel Sturgis. Give him a promotion. Whoops. You just got bumped up there, buddy. Good job. So it's it's a start. Start. Army of Northwest Virginia. German. We can make this our all-stars. Go just flat out across the board. Uh, Lincoln calls a militia. Called arms. I'm going to pause this here real quick before we get into a... Uh, Battle I'm not ready for. Pause, pause, pause. All right, so Irvin McDowell, we've got the beginnings of an army for him. Uh, Pennsylvania, David Patterson. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, he doesn't have much. Um, I'm going to build him out. And then I will get back to you so you don't have to watch me scrolling through names and all that. All right. So, William Pat or Robert Patterson's Department of Pennsylvania has Cadwallader, I'm Ulysses S. Grant in charge of infantry divisions. Uh, Henry S. Burton is in charge of our artillery division with uh, Willis Gorman. In charge of our uh, cavalry. Did forget to replace him with a cavalry guy, so let's find ourselves a cavalry guy. We got a lot of good commanders to dole out here. Artillery. Yeah, this is troublesome. Out of artillery officers. Want that one good cavalry commander here. Get lower in the ranks, might have a problem finding them. <laughs> yeah. I don't 
think we're going to find him. Just Wade Hampton. Even on our side, who knows? No, someone will correct me in there. There we go. Stoneman. George Stoneman. Captain George Stoneman, you are now general. There you go. And we're going to leave uh, Burton as he is. But that's uh, the Department of Pennsylvania. Now we got to work on Mr. McClellan over here in the Department of Ohio. Who's got absolutely nothing. So we're going to uh, add what we can to him. It looks like he's just... Alright, we'll give you a division and then move two units down underneath you. Uh, Gorman. Are we replacing you with... Hmm. He's just got some good stats. So we'll replace you with uh, Timothy Andrews now. Uh, let's... Not bad. Leave him as is. Hobart Ward. No. No, there's a lot better. Mansfield, we'll leave him as is. Not too bad. An engineer, but. Work alright. Uh, we're going to give McClellan uh, four divisions of infantry instead of the uh, standard two. Uh, what I've been doing. Uh, we have his artillery and cavalry division added in. And I'll come back and show you who I've got in charge of those. Alright, so McClellan's Department of Ohio is fleshed out. Uh, we have uh, 24,000 men on their way to uh, George B's command. Uh, like I said, I did give them an extra division of infantry. Um plus the artillery and uh, cavalry. We've got Andrews, Timothy P. Andrews. We've got Samuel P. Heinzelman, uh, Hobart Ward, Joseph Mansfield, uh, Robert Buchanan in charge of the artillery with uh, Henner Gerard in charge of our cavalry. All right, next up, I think this is the last one that we have to really with uh, the, the Department of the West under William Harney um, take a look here yeah he really needs the uh, he needs the help, out west he's going to need the help, See, what I want to do is I want to beef up Harney and then with the rest of my recruits I'm going to make a uh, an army all of my own Put whoever I want in charge of it I did give uh, Grant a division command, I think, in Western Virginia, or uh, that army out there. I already gave him a, a division command, so at some point he's going to have to work his way up uh, my army. But we're going to go with uh, three divisions of infantry, one of cavalry and one of artillery for uh, William Harney. All right, Harney's Department of the West, 16,830 men. Uh, when they are all assembled, uh, we've got a division under Thomas Stockton, Edward Baker, William T. Ward, with Joseph Haskins leading the artillery and Charles Whiting, uh, the cavalry. So 
that is our current standing army. We have, uh, yeah, it says 19,000 now, but once they all get here, uh, we are going to have some decent sized forces starting out. Um, I don't usually go crazy like this. Uh, what do we have for projects? Oh, Paul's Carbines. Uh, obsolete surplus weapons of no use. We're going to go with no. We're not going to go with the Hall's Carbines. The game warns you that it's uh, something shady or sus, and we'll just ignore that for now. All right, so out here we've got Wellen in the army of Ohio. Uh, we can't move until the readiness is up into the red. Um, uh, last thing I want to do with manpower here. I don't know if I want to do it just yet here. For the new army, I could do that. Uh, I'm from New York. I was going to recruit from New York, but I've got um, next to nobody left in New York. So my guys are going to be coming from uh, Massachusetts. Hannibal Day is not going to lead my army. Let's find someone good. Winfield Scott. Well, I will put this army together. My army of New England and get back to you with the results. And then after that, I'm going to build some supply depots, and we'll go over the uh, situation before we get started with the actual uh, campaign. This is going to be kind of a procedural episode. i um, going to hold off on making any moves, uh, mostly because I can't move, but we are going to uh, hold off until the next episode to get things moving. So let me throw my army together, uh, build some supply depots, and then I'll come back with the... Uh, report and we'll go from there all right so here's our newly formed army of new england under the command of winfield scott hancock uh kind of shorted myself on uh troops here um didn't have enough uh right now for a third division so uh we're going to be a little bit stronger uh bigger than some of the other armies but that's okay uh, one division under Thomas Crittenden. Richard B. or Richard Arnold is in charge of the artillery. Uh, this guy, John Buford. He is in charge of our cavalry. Uh, and then we've got another infantry division with Eugene R. in charge of that. So that's uh that's our army so far going forward. Uh, I haven't built any supply depots just yet. Um not really sure if there are supply depots already on the map. Uh, there's the Washington Depot. I'm going to hold off for the time being and see what the uh, Confederates do uh, before we start building any type of um, any type of building, basically. Uh... Going forward, um, I'm going to record the second episode after I record this first one. Um, not sure if, in the meantime, our guys are going to be able to move or not. Their readiness has to get up there. But um, if you guys have any tips or advice uh, as in terms of uh, general strategy or what you think I should do, by all means, leave those in the comment section below. Uh, like I said at the beginning, being the first episode, if you want to help this uh, series get a little exposure on YouTube, hit the like button. Comments help too. If you're new and want to follow along, I wouldn't mind having you come along for the ride as we start up this uh, Union Max Difficulty campaign. So hit the subscribe. You'll come with us and we will see you for our next episode where something will actually happen. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.